Hi, uh, this is one example of how we could do the globalization curriculum in FROG. This is uh, what I constructed uh, just after seeing uh, the presentation at the conference in Luzerne. So there are many different possibilities and some of what I did here was more to show off the possibilities. Um, as you can see, the graph looks very complex. Uh, on the one hand, we are planning to simplify things, uh, but on the other hand, it doesn't actually matter that much because I'm happy to uh, do the work of actually implementing the graphs in Frog. And for the teacher, well, the first time you use it in your class, you would see an interface that looks like this, but all you would have to do is to go next, 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 next. Uh, but in the future, our idea is to simplify so that the teachers would actually never see this interface. Anyway, let's look at what it uh, looks like. So this is the graph editor. Each of these boxes is an activity or a tool. So for example, here is a video player. And when I open the sidebar, I see that it's linking to a video. So this is the configuration for each activity. So of course, the video player has the configuration uh, of a URL. And we also have some here we ask them to write the definition and here it has some prompts so each um, activity type has a different kind of configuration uh, this weird thing is a social operator so in this case it actually puts people into groups and then right now we have to connect it exactly to all the activities that are in groups uh, we're going to make that simpler in the future and uh, these these guys are product operators so they can do things like aggregate information, distribute information, send information for peer review, <laughs> etc. Um, so, right. Um, I see that I also have two activities. So the way it works here is that the individual, uh, the first line, and that includes this second activity here that's stacked, these are individual activities. The second line, including all of these three, is group activities, and they all have to be connected for the moment to a social operator. And the third line is whole class activities. The fourth line here is activities that only the teacher sees. And uh, right now we don't have a good way of um, pre-populating with some content. And so we actually put some activities here that the teacher can fill out. But this is something we'll fix very shortly, and uh, that'll make it much easier. So I don't actually remember what we needed to put in here, but let's see if we can figure it out. So based on this graph, sorry, I'm going to create a new session. Again, this whole workflow, I think we can optimize in the future to make it much easier for the teacher. And um, to see how this looks for the students, I'm going to open for students because we often want to see what happens when students are um, a, put in groups, for example. So here, this is not actually one student view. This is four different students, and this is what would be on each student's screen. And then I'm also going to open a view for the teacher because of those two first activities. So now I'm going to start the first two preparation activities. And again, I don't remember exactly what I was planning to put here. I think these were words that needed to be defined. So let me see, uh, globalization, uh, indigenization, homogenization, diversification. And I think these were actually sentences that um, students would um, drag. So I, again, I, rem I think I did this during the uh, during the conference from the curriculum, but in this case, I'll just fill it out like this. Again, um, I am planning to make it so that this is part of the graph design so that you wouldn't have to do this at runtime and that would make it much better. Okay, so now uh, I will start the first activity. And as you can see here, the f there's a video player. 
and there is an instruction to write an individual definition. So what happens here is that each student gets a video player and I'm just going to pause this. Uh, and uh, this field to write definitions. And I'm also going to open a single student view so that we can see a little bit better what it actually looks like. So again, in Frog, uh, when, when, whenever you stack um, multiple activities on top of each other, like here, what happens is that it simply uh, splits the screen and shows you both of them. So in this case, the video player and the instructions. So here I can take some notes, and this is an individual. It could. So one important thing to remember is that all the frog activities uh, can be a group, so they can be collaborative, they can be individual. Uh, we do have some dashboards. So here, during the running, the teacher can, uh, for example, see uh, how the students are doing. So here we have five students. And we see, for example, the Chen Li jump to the middle of the of the video. We see that these four, three students have been paused for a long time. This is what the red color means, that they paused and that they stayed paused for a long time. So this is a way for the teacher to monitor the progress. But the teacher can also see in real time as the students are editing the different documents. So, okay. So again, the first thing was to write individual definitions while they're watching the video. Now, the second, uh, I believe, is that we're going to put them in groups. We're going to have them show the individual definitions from the two students. They're going to have a chat, and they're going to edit the definition for the whole group. So let me just add some content for the other students. So, hello, hi. I think globalization. Maybe not. Why? is that so i'm just adding uh, some content um again sorry it's a lot of pains here uh if we go to the dashboard you see here all of the documents written by this by the teacher and now when we go to the next activity so these three are now open what we see here is that there's a group with bob chen lee and niels these are just so in this case, I decided to split the class in two. So you can either say how many groups you should have or how many members each group should have. Um, here we see the three documents from the three um, students in the group. So Bob, Chen Li, and Nils. And here is a collaborative editing um, for those group members. So um, we can see how that looks here. Um, so of course this is very small, but you see here that these uh, Niels and Bob are uh, able to see real time and also edit. You see here that when I'm editing here, it shows up here and here, and each person actually gets their own color, um, so they can keep track of who is writing what. Again, of course, there's a dashboard where we see in real time. Uh, what's being written. In fact, we can also go back and see how it was written if we want to, if that's interesting. Um, so there was that, there was the chat, and then they can look at these documents, right? So the next step is to collect all the definitions from the two, so in this case two groups, but it could be many more groups, and show it and then do a vote on the best one. So here we have something, I'll just add something here. And we'll go to the next. And here you see I add the two definitions written by the two groups. And here I can vote. Uh, and you see again that this is live, so each student can vote. And when they vote, um, it live synchronizes. So that's just one way of doing kind of a debriefing in front of the class. See what the next activity is? Right, so 
this is um, uh, so there are different ways of classifying, right? But uh, I believe in the um, lesson ideas ideas that there were uh, sentences and they were supposed to classify whether they are homogenisierend or fragmentierend. And uh, so in this case, we only have the the sentences, sorry, the, the sentence one, two, three, four, five that I wrote in. But the students can move them. They see how they change color depending on where you put them. Um, and uh, let's see. So this is an individual activity, as you can see. This could also be a group activity, of course. Right, so you see here that if I move for one, it doesn't, it's individual. But again, everything could be a group activity. And what's the next activity? Let's see, right, so then uh, we just have a, a, a form where we can ask um, some, some text questions. And in this case, the teacher has a dashboard where they see all of the uh, responses. So if I add some more responses here, we see live in the dashboard, you know, groups by question, what are the responses? After that, let's see, now we go to a group activity. And what's the group activity? Well, we're asking Ah, okay, so here I actually uploaded a PDF, um, but since then I've deleted that PDF from my file system, so it doesn't work. But here we could show a PDF uh, <laughs> of a PowerPoint presentation, for example, and uh, then we can, again, use this collaborative editing, and again, you see how it works with multiple students, right? Um, the next activity is a, is an embedded website. So let's see what that is. So that's uh, a H5P component. And this is the timeline. I think there was a, a link to a timeline in the idea set, but it was uh, uh, a flash component or something like that, which I could not, or Java maybe, that I couldn't put in an iframe. But uh, so I, I just found this H5P um, timeline as, as just an example of a timeline but of course we can put anything anything that can fit in an iframe we could embed here as content and then we go to a kind of a fun one um, so there's uh, an activity here um, called um, called uh, this um, word selection and I'm actually, uh huh. So the idea here was to send different text to different groups. Um, let's see if that worked. It doesn't seem to have worked. Vorteile, Vorteile, Nachteile. Ah, it did work. Okay, I wasn't reading carefully. So here you see that some students received Nachteile, and some t people received Vorteile. And uh, what's neat about this is that you can actually um, so select words uh, that you don't understand. Um, and uh, it's interesting, it, it has some issue with the uh, umlaut here, but I thought I fixed that. So I will look into that because it should work with umlaut as well. And uh, while they're doing that, teacher can right away see which words have been selected and they can also see and here we have the whole text the Vorteile and the Nachteile uh, and they see which words have been selected and how many people have selected them and then what we can do is we can actually go into a spreadsheet so right so here what we're doing is uh, we're giving some instructions, provide a positive example for each word, and now I can say uh, globalization <laughs> should be uh, positive uh, globalization. That's good. I don't know. Homogenization can do wonders. Um, and here you see that we have some students who are asked to provide a positive example, 
and some students are asked to provide a negative example. And you see that these two students are in a group, so they have also collaborative editing in the, in the spreadsheet. Of course, we can see uh, oh, there's no dashboard actually for that activity. And finally, we combine these spreadsheets. And so we see here um, the positive example from group one and the negative example from group two. Um, so I know that I'm moving very quickly and I'm showing you a lot of different activity types. Um, this is quite a complex script and I'm not necessarily suggesting that this is the best thing to start with, um, but I wanted to show showcase some of the activity types that we have and some of the patterns, uh, whether it's um, writing individually, then going into a group, and then seeing all the, the individual contributions, and then writing a group contribution, um, highlighting words, sending things to tables, combining tables together, um, using the, the, the visual board to classify things. So there's a lot of different things that we can do. And um, we could even have multiple versions of the graph. So one could be uh, very kind of self, you know, individual activities all along. So you, each student does their own thing, but the teacher can monitor and uh, drive the graph. Um, or something like this, where there's a lot of groups and there's um, some whole class work, etc. So just have a look at this and uh, think about how this could fit different parts of, of your curriculum and, and then we can have a discussion.